Hello chess lovers, welcome to the new video. So we had game two in the World Championship match. Uh, today Magnus Carlsen was white and Jan Nepomniszczy was black. Um, let's see what happened in this very very complicated game. Uh, Magnus opened with d4 and we had knight f6 and after c4 usually a Nepo plays g6 uh, with intentions of going into Grunfeld defense but uh, today he opted for e6 was it a good choice let's see uh, knight f3 d5 g3 the so-called catalan uh, opening this is all theory so i'm going to go quickly uh, to the next few moves uh, bishop e7 uh, bishop g2 castles kingside castle king sides uh, king side uh, dc4 queen c2 and now when i was a little boy what i know was the main stuff was a6 queen takes b5 attacking the queen queen c2 and bishop b7 and this was a sort of a tabia like a starting position of this opening so many players would get to exact to, to this exact position uh, in the Catalan opening and there are hundreds if not thousands of games not that I <laughs> have looked at all of them but I have seen quite a few uh, but in these times um, the, the theory has changed I think uh, so now uh, black players uh, don't go for a6 but I mean they do but some players at the top level go for b5 uh, and here the main response is a4 and a4 is an unpleasant move uh, that uh, black has to meet with a pawn sacrifice because if you defend with a6 then after a b5 uh, there are problems uh, here and if you uh, defend with c6 there is a hidden trick here this is good to know you can lose a game like this uh, very easily look at this a b5 c b5 knight g5 opening the bishop and attacking h7 so you say so what does it matter that you're attacking h7 well the thing is uh, you cannot defend this rook in any other way but by moving knight d5 but when you do that <laughs> then queen h7 is a checkmate uh, so this is a little trick yeah uh, so okay a4 is the main line but Carlsen chose a different move um, he chose knight e5 and this is the point because I watched some parts of the broadcast and I did watch this part and here Nepo started to think he looked uh, surprised uh, I'm sure that he uh, covered this move but maybe he forgot or I, actually I don't know I don't know but he spent some time thinking here and went for c6 and at first it might look that black is just blundering a pawn but actually no he's a pawn up and he's ready to give one back uh, because look if white takes then after knight takes bishop takes rook b8 black has solved his problems um, with the weakness on c6 and with his development of the queen side and also this rook is protecting uh, the b5 pawn he has a better development and some space on the queen side okay white has central advantage but it seems like a balanced position so magnus uh, did not uh, capture that pawn but instead he played a4 and in a way uh, he transposed into those lines that start with a4 on the previous move and now um, I think that there are several options here but uh, maybe not I don't know I'm not ex an expert so knight d5 was played looks like a logical move uh, to blunt uh, this diagonal this bishop on this diagonal we had knight c3 and now f6 so sooner or later black needs to play this move because without playing it uh, this knight is just a monster it keeps pressuring the c6 square and it makes um, black's development awkward um, the best way to show this is by looking at several variations 
but I'm not going to go into that detail. Uh, you can check some uh, reference books on this or databases or you can turn on your engine and check for yourself. But the thing is this knight is very um, it's very unpleasant to have it there. So f6 has to be played now or later but Nepo chose now. Okay, knight retreated and now I like this move. I don't know if it's a good move but queen d7 it's a hard move to make. You block your bishop, okay, maybe he doesn't want to go there, but you also block your knight. It's a very strange position of the queen, but there is some method to this madness, because from d7, the queen is protecting the b5 pawn and also supporting the d5 square and defending the e6 pawn. So, there is some logic to put the queen here. Um, was it the best move? I don't know, but I kind of like it. It reminds me of some moves uh, from French defense or uh, those kind of openings where the queen goes to d7 and blocks all the pieces, but it has some deep nuanced idea. Okay, e4 followed, uh, kicking the knight, uh, knight b4, queen e2, and knight came into a knight square. This is a beautiful knight, yeah? It's in White's camp. But one day, one day, White might do this. Undermine the c4 pawn and then the d3 knight is not going to be secure. So Black needs to be careful. On the other hand, that's we are talking about something that might happen one day. Because right now, I think you cannot do it. If you do it right now, I think that uh, black can capture here, win time, and then just capture here. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but it looks like <coughs> that's the reason why uh, b3 is not possible. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I see now. Uh, so black can capture and maybe then push and push. Maybe, maybe that's the reason. I don't know, I didn't go too deep because even if I did so, I think it would be impossible for me. Uh, to figure out uh, this position. Uh, of course, I could do it with the help of an engine, but for this World Championship match, I decided not to use an engine. I want to give my own opinion um, about the moves and positions that we see. And here, uh, there is oh, a small digression. I did watch parts of the broadcast, so I heard some opinions of Giri and Judith, but I didn't watch all of it. And but okay, I, I did learn something from them, that's true. Uh, so here there is a positional threat. Uh, the, the threat is b4, because that move would have secured the position of this knight. How is that so? Look, let's say white just develops, develops bishop e3. Then we go b4, and when the knight moves, we can go bishop a6. And now the knight is defended with this x-ray. Yeah. So these ideas, they don't work anymore. And uh, this is a problem piece. So this is a positional threat. And that's why uh, Magnus has to do something about it. So what he did, he played e5. So now if black goes b4, there is a square on e4. So the knight uh, doesn't have to go back. It can go forward. Uh, all right. Uh, but b4 didn't happen. Instead, bishop b7. And uh, white took on f6. Bishop took, and we have knight e4, and I like the next move, uh, knight a6. Uh, because the other squares are taken by black species or pawns, so this might be an idea to connect these two guys for now. And then one can get exchange, and another one can come to d3. That's just an option. Also, sometimes the c5 square might be available. And here, I saw in the stream, and some people said that Magnus should have taken on f6, and after rook takes, he would have the e5 square to exchange this knight, and the pressure along the e-file with ideas like this, or pressure along this diagonal. Very complicated, but lots of play. Lots of play for the pawn. Or, after gf6, to control the e5 square, then a white's compensation uh, would consist of um, good diagonal and weak king, yeah, and some files, some files to work for, 
and some awkwardness of black's uh, pawns on the queen side. Uh, but Magnus, according to uh, those players stronger than me, than myself, uh, played an inaccuracy or even a mistake. He went knight e5. And he had missed something. He had missed that black can give up his dark square bishop. I mean, exchange it, not give it for free. A bishop takes, pawn takes, and now knight c5. Because there is no pawn on d4, no one is controlling there. And now we see uh, the knights, uh, they perfectly support each other. So they are not going to be dislodged so easily. It would take some uh, material concessions uh, for that. <coughs> if you exchange uh, that knight on c5, knight takes, knight takes, then you're missing that knight as white. Because that knight had lots of options, g5, d6, and even c5 sometimes. Not in this position, but in uh, some possible lines. And uh, this is just not good. This is just not good. Uh, Black wants to exchange these two guys, so he can organize it. He can support the b5, move uh, the c5 knight, and then play c5, and he's just better. Maybe even close to winning. I'm not sure, but I don't like this position for white. So, at this point, Magnus realized that he was in trouble and he had a big time advantage uh, just to move uh, before this one. Uh, but uh, now he started to uh, spend this extra time and very soon um, he actually had less time than that. So, here he decided to sacrifice material. So, he started with knight d6. And even though it doesn't look like you give up material, you do. You really do. After knight b3, uh, the rook is attacked, and now he has a choice. He can move the rook and give up the bishop, or he can move the bishop and give up the rook. So, according to those commentators, uh, bishop e3 was stronger, and then he should have sacrificed the material in this manner. I don't know. It looks really nice, but... For me, it's hard to uh, evaluate that position. And uh, Magnus chose rook b1, so that's another way of sacrificing. After knight takes, uh, knight, uh, rook takes, uh, knight takes, rook takes, he's an exchange and a pawn down, but he has a strong knight, uh, he has a strong bishop, he has some attacking possibilities on the queen side. And his rook is really good, yeah. You can imagine uh, some ideas like this. Uh, of course, black is much better uh, here, but the position is so complex and that I believe that there are no humans on this planet at this moment that could play this without inaccuracies or mistakes, because it's so complicated. Uh, if if you want to understand this position, you could spend maybe hours um, feeding the moves, the possible replies to your engine, and asking it uh, why is this good, why is this not good, and so on. Uh, and and this is what we see in this game. In the next uh, couple of moves, both players made several inaccuracies, and um, I saw people on the internet they blame them like you know like Nepo is not good he cannot convert or Magnus made a mistake or something but guys give them a break this is just not possible for humans maybe one day when we evolve more or when our minds become more advanced I don't know but at this point of human history it is literally not possible to play this position perfectly for either side. That's my opinion. Nepo started with rook b8, a good move, defending this bishop. Um, now, you might think, hey, but white can take here, because the rook is a stronger piece than a knight, so even though it defends, it's going to have to give up itself. Yes. This would win the exchange, but remember, uh, black was an exchange and a pawn up. And this would not be a pleasant position for white. 
uh, black doesn't have an extra exchange anymore but he has a clear advantage it's like having two extra pawns because here he has three against one and this kingside majority of whites is not going anywhere anytime soon so maybe this is even lost I i'm not sure but this looks really bad uh, so rook b8 good move and now uh, you cannot take uh, so rook d1 rook d1 I, I looked at this position for some time by myself and I couldn't figure out because Nepo played bishop a8 uh, he played bishop a8 but I couldn't figure out was this a threat uh, was this a threat you know opening the attack on the queen and taking a pawn I just couldn't uh, figure it out it's so complicated uh, probably the engine knows but after bishop a8 <coughs> I just quickly looked um, so let's say you take on b5 what's happening here I don't know should you move your queen and try to play on the b file doesn't look good but who knows should you sacrifice the queen like this queen takes queen takes take here but then i don't like this position uh, for black because uh, this is a weakness uh, these pawns are oh, maybe i'm wrong i don't know i cannot evaluate this i just cannot evaluate it's above my level anyway uh, since after bishop a8 magnus did not play this or this i guess it's not good that's my guess so he went bishop e4 and now it's interesting the bishop attacks here you can imagine the queen coming here or supporting from this direction and then rook joining in the attack it looks very dangerous it really looks very dangerous and uh, on top of that sometimes there are some violent ideas like bishop h7 maybe not in this position but maybe even here I i'm not sure it's so complicated uh, it's almost impossible uh, to calculate everything here and if i remember correctly because this is the point where i did watch the stream they said that b takes a4 was the move i think was it here or was it a move ago or maybe it was g6 i'm not sure but if you tell me that the human can figure out that this is the way to go during the practical game you know not at home sitting for several hours just you know you have maybe 30 minutes i don't know how much time and you cannot spend all the time on one move i think it's impossible i just think it's impossible so what nepo did he played c3 it's a sort of a practical decision so after c3 the position kind of simplifies uh, not immediately but in a few moves and uh, if you want I mean I can show you lines I can turn on the engine and show you lines but that's not the point uh, here <clears throat> I don't think you can even learn a lot from this position because this is so atypical this is so complex this is this is now like computer chess you know this is in a realm of studies and deep deep calculations so so i don't know let's just look what at what happened uh, queen c2 attacking here and we have g6 one might think hey maybe we can sacrifice in some positions this works but here not uh, this is my analysis take take and then uh, king goes to the side and if white tries this kind of business he is actually losing i think so i think that he is losing after queen h7 because if you win the queen you you do it but then you lose your own queen after this pin so i don't think uh, bishop g6 works at least not in this position so magnus took on c3 and nepo took on a4 and uh, queen a4 and now rook f d8 so this is what we call a pin uh, now this knight cannot move for the moment that's why magnus moved his rook to the side and now this pawn might drop and i told you a long time ago that one of the ideas for black is to exchange these two pieces 
and that's what Nepo does now. So he offers the exchange of bishops and the exchange of queens. You see, there is a, a double, um, how do you call it? Um, I forgot the English word. Anyway, there are two trade offers. So queen uh, was uh, saved, not to be exchanged, but bishop e4, knight e4, and there is a tract uh, of a royal fork. So king h8, avoiding. But knight comes back to d6, and this is a very strong knight, you know. Black is an exchange up, but I don't see how he can win. It's, it's very hard. Uh, I don't see how he can lose too, but because he can always give one rook for uh, the knight and for this pawn, and then there will be some simplification. So he played rook b6, but that cost him a pawn, and now we have rook db8. So one idea is queen c6, offering the trade of queens, and when the queen runs, then check, and the queen controls g2. So, so queen c6 would force a trade of queens. Um, but then we lose this pawn. So it looks like it's drawish. I don't know. That's how it looks like. Uh, Magnus played king g2, so he showed that he is even willing to allow this, exchanging these two pawns, I guess. And then maybe the knight can come here with some checkmating threats. So maybe black would have to give uh, his extra exchange back anyway. And a6 was played, preserving the pawn. King h3, so now, because now there is no exchange of these pawns uh, after queen c6, on the, you know, if white allows because this pawn is defended. So now white needs to take care of that. So he evaded the check. But rook comes to c6, queen d4, and be careful if you... I mean, black wants to give up the exchange back and to simplify. But if you try now, if you try immediately, there is a problem. There is an x-ray attack and you just lose. Knight f7. If you take... We take the rook, and you probably lose. Maybe you don't. I don't know. But this looks bad. This doesn't look good. Okay, uh, so that's why, because of these motives, uh, King G8 was played. I was thinking maybe King G7. I don't know. But remember this position. Maybe there is a downside to King G7. But later on. I will show you an upside. So I don't know if there is another downside, but let's go back. Uh, let's see what happened. King g8, c4. Now you can never take this pawn. It's guarded by the knight, which is guarded by another pawn. So all you can do is to attack d6 and sacrifice back, I think. Uh, queen c7, queen g4, and rook d6. So Black did what I mentioned that he was planning, give, gave back uh, the material. And now watch, after c5, queen c5, queen e6, check! If the king was on g7, this would not be check, and this pawn would survive. So that's my opinion. But maybe there is another downside. I don't know. King g7, rook a6, and here Nepo played rook f8. But I was thinking, uh, why didn't he take the pawn? Is it so dangerous? Uh, you cannot give this check because the queen is defending. You can give this check. The king can can go back because then we take the rook with the check. But the king can go up. And then I was thinking, can we take this rook? So, I'm not sure. I think you can. Uh, sorry, I think you can't. Because look, uh, queen f1. If you go up, queen f5 check, king h4, queen h5 checkmate. Um, it, but here, there is king h4. And then, who checkmates who? Queen a6, queen f8 mate. So, queen c4 check, queen f4, defending and checking. But then I thought more, so I said, okay. Queen f1 
is not good. But we can go here. Queen f5. And if you go back, I guess some perpetual or picking up the rook is possible. But if you block, then queen d3, queen g3, queen a6. Perfectly equal. So it looks like this was possible. I don't know. Maybe there is something else. So this is the position when we need to look for improvement. I'm sure if you turn on the engine, it will show you what's the best move. But I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it. So I think that queen e5 is a draw. Maybe there is something that I'm missing. If you can find it, let me know in the comments. Anyway, maybe Nepo just didn't want to risk. I don't know. He played rook f8. So he didn't take the pawn. It's a good practical decision, maybe, because he's not going to lose this position. He, he, he's threatening this pawn, so, so when white saves it, then he forces a transition into um, a rook endgame. And uh, rook, rook endgames 3 against 2, with no downside to any of the kings, they are drawn. Yeah? It's a different story if this king was far away or something but or some pawn structure abnormalities but here it's easy it's easy to hold i think i could hold this against carlson no problem <laughs> I, I i really think so uh, king g4 rook b5 rook e7 rook a5 rook e5 the only thing you have to avoid actually one of the things that you have to avoid is going into a pawn end game sometimes you can do it but usually not so here you don't want to exchange, you just avoid. Yeah? You exchange if you see that it's a forced draw, like you win a pawn or something. But usually you don't you cannot afford that. So h4, king g7, and now h5. So I said uh, first I said one thing to the only thing, but actually one of the things. The other things thing that you should avoid is to give white a passed pawn. Uh, while there are two other pawns on the board. So you should not take. Don't do this. This is bad technique. Because this should be a draw too. But now white can play. He can play forever. Because he has a pass pawn. And um, it's a draw, I guess. But there is some play. You have to be accurate. I think in the last World Championship match we had this position with colors reversed. Caruana had... Uh, I think he had B and c pawns against a pawn or a and b against c there was some in there and it was a draw in the end but corona played so he had uh, reasons to play on so you don't take don't take let the white take if he wants and then he will have two against one and then he will get have one against zero and your king is in a good position and you can set up either the philidor defense or Whatever you want, you can draw in many ways. Uh, king h6 was played. King h4. Rook a1. Now, we attack from behind. Um, g4. And after this, the players agreed to draw. Well, now, it looks like it's a forced, uh, it's a forced uh, drawn pawn endgame. Yeah? Uh, king g3 can take and if white takes we take back we cannot win this uh, this is not possible to win the king is in time uh, to take a defensive position even if you manage you know to go with your king as white <laughs> black can just deflect your king and uh, stand up uh, stand in front of the pawn uh, uh, black white could try uh, these moves yeah one of these moves but it doesn't work uh, i'm pretty sure uh, it doesn't work okay so this is how the game ended uh, so to sum it up in the opening uh, carlson uh, surprised nepo i think and he got some kind of uh, advantage um, or actually position that he knew better but then he made an inaccuracy and thanks to a very accurate play by Nepo. Uh, Carlsen got into a bad position. But that position was so complicated.
that it's almost impossible to play it perfectly. And they both made several inaccuracies and some mistakes. And finally, they simplified into a drone endgame. So that's uh, the summary. And if you watch some commentators and they just say, oh, look, you should play this. It's easy to say when you turn on the engine. But when you sit and play, it's a different animal, trust me. All right, thank you for watching and see you again. Bye.